We saw extraordinary results in these midterms elections that no one thought possible. More independents voted for Democrats and Republicans in this election. Young people, you voted in historic numbers again, just as you did two years ago. Young people voted to continue addressing the climate crisis, gun violence, personal rights and freedoms, student debt relief, all those things which you stepped up to do. President Biden praising young Americans for showing up to the polls in near record fashion in this year's midterms, if you can believe it. Let's bring in director of polling at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University, John Della Volpe. He's also an MSNBC political contributor. Also with us, co-host of iGen Politics podcast, Victor Shi. He was the youngest elected delegate for Joe Biden in 2020. And the co-founder and CEO of All In Together, Lauren Leader, joins the table. It's good to have you all with us. John Della Volpe, we'll start with you. In terms of the youth voter turnout, there's so many different ways to be surprised here because some of the focus groups that we saw, a lot of young people didn't even know there were midterms, and yet a lot did. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely right. Let me break it down as simply as I possibly can, Mika. Um, if we just look at, first of all, the majority, the close to 60% of voters in this country who are over the age of 45. By a margin of 10 points, they voted Republican in House races across the country and in most Senate races as well. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Democrats went in with a minus 10 advantage. They put a tremendous amount of pressure on young people to do two things. A, to show up, and B, to support Democrats. Young people under 45 supported Democrats by 13 points. Young people under 30 supported Democrats by 28. It's a, this would have been a red wave election if not for millions and millions of young millennials and Gen Zers. So, uh, John, let's take a case in your larger point. In Arizona, just looking at the current numbers, mm -hmm. Mark Kelly among voters 18 to 29 is plus 56. Voters 30 to 44, he's plus 19. Once you get past 44, Masters wins. So this is a story of the young vote. There's no question about it here. And I guess the question, a larger question going forward is what are the implications for sort of the shifting vote here, which is to say young people by and large going for Democrats. Voters, just put it bluntly, who are going to be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Right, really, this is not a surprise. We've been talking about this on your show for years now. This is the third election in a row where Democrats have relied on the youth vote to make the difference. In 18, in 20, and in 22, it's the same thing. We're, Republicans now are a small, melting iceberg. Republicans lost white, non-college voters under 30. That's the heart hmm. and soul of the Republican Party right now. They lost the new generation already with this wow. demographic. And Victor, what was it that brought young people to the polls? Talk, talk about the issues that really drove them there. Yeah, so what we see from the data overwhelmingly is that abortion was uh, the number one driver for young people showing up to the ballot box and voting. And I was listening to the earlier segment that you had on uh, before uh, this panel, and you were mentioning the fall of Roe and what it's like for young people, and especially young women, to mm -hmm. face that political environment. And you were so right. For so many young women across the country, that was the first time that we saw basically a right get overturned by the Supreme Court. Young women in this country grew up during a time when abortion was basically a guarantee. So to see that was really alarming for young people. And you could see in the data right after the fall of Roe, the number of young people who registered to vote and made their voices heard. And you saw that in Kansas and then again in uh, 2022 on Tuesday in states like Michigan and other states where abortion was very much on the ballot. But you also had other issues like climate change and student loan forgiveness and gun reform. All of these issues are so immediate for young people and they showed up to vote because there was so much at stake in this election. So, Victor, if you look at the numbers, the young people who did show up to vote went overwhelmingly for Democrats and, as you point out, probably stopped the red wave. But among eligible voters 18 to 29, turnout was only 27 percent. Um, how do you get that number up in this country? 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll just start by saying this. We don't have the final turnout number yet, but just based off of some of the early voting data that we have, as well as some of the exit polling data, there's one thing that's clear, and that's that young people voted overwhelmingly for Democrats uh, in this election cycle, and young Republicans stayed home in this election cycle, which I think is what's driving a lot of the turnout down. But in terms of what we should do going forward, um, I'm grateful to be part of an organization called Voters of Tomorrow. There are so many other Gen Z-led organizations out there making calls, doing relationships organizing, and that's what it's going to take going forward. We're going to need all hands on deck. We have an election in Georgia coming up in December in 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. Millennials and Gen Zers will outnumber any other uh, generation in America. So we are growing in political power, and so it's going to take more young people at the helm doing the work, but it's also going to take Democrats investing in young people because, uh, like John said earlier, there really is no path to victory in any election going forward without uh, young people turning out and voting for Democrats. So John De La Volpe finally uh, just in terms of those issues that drove those young voters, um, in a way, it portends for a lot more to go to the polls in 2024, given that this was a midterm, which is usually uh, really not where young people end up showing up voting in a midterm. Um, and also, these are these are the kids, some of them that grew up in the era of school shootings, like they know somebody mm -hmm. or heard of something yep. or were there when yeah. these slaughters were happening? Uh, I just did a focus group last night, Mika, and every member of my focus group from, from eight different states across the country still talked about the trauma of growing up in this era. But I want to just put a, a finer point on what Victor just said. This victory for, for Democrats and for young people is not in spite of, but because of Joe Biden and the Democratic mm -hmm. administration. And the reason is you have a lot of this energy from the grassroots, but unless it's empowered from the top down, that we're not going to optimize that. So the, the work that, that the administration put in to listen to and to provide and to deliver on the promises from 2020 and to engage with young people and influences over the course of the last couple of years, that's what I think was able to, to kind of spark the, the yeah. energy yeah. to make them organize. John Della Volpe and Victor Shee, thank you both very much for being on the show this morning. And Laura.